In this lesson, we will use the NETCAT utility to assess organizational security. We are in the NETCAT portion of the video series. This lesson is part of a video series that prepares you for the hands-on portion of the CompTIA Security Plus exam and is designed to give you hands-on experience with the operations and incident response section of the exam. So what is NETCAT? The NETCAT command is a versatile networking utility in Linux that facilitates reading from and writing to network connections using TCP or UDP protocols. Network administrators, system operators, and developers use NETCAT. It was created in 1996 by Hobbit. NETCAT has been widely used in networking tasks. It is available on various Unix-like operating systems, including Linux distros and Windows. NETCAT is used for tasks like port scanning, banner grabbing, transferring files, and creating reverse shells, making it a valuable tool for network troubleshooting and security assessments, and we will go over all of these in this video. NETCAT is invoked from the command line with various options to specify the desired mode, client or server, the protocol, TCP or UDP, or other parameters. The rest of the how is what this video is all about, so let's get into it. To get started, grab the companion guide from the link in the show notes below. Also, if you like this content, please make sure to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss any new videos. Okay, so we're ready to get started with uh, NETCAT. So we know we can go to our configuration. This is our Kali distribution of Linux. We have an Ubuntu version as our target. Kali Linux is our offensive security, sometimes called offset computer. And we're going to go ahead and launch a terminal into the Kali Linux. I'm right clicking on a desktop, open terminal here. You've seen this before. We'll make this a little bit bigger with Control plus plus. And netcat comes pre-installed on Linux. And I can take a look at that by doing netcat and minus H and I get the H command. We will go through a couple of these help options. I also want to comment that netcat and NC are the same thing. So you see NC and NCAT, they are synonymous. It is the same exact thing. It's just a uh, shortened version of NETCAT. Okay, on the Ubuntu side, it may or may not be installed on your target machine. So let's go ahead and open a terminal here. Same process. I open a terminal in the desktop. If I want to make this a little bit bigger, I can do control plus, get that a little bit bigger as well. Might as well make it full screen. So we have all the real estate and I'm actually going to install NETCAT just in case. So in case you don't have it, it's sudo app apt install and we're going to do NETCAT and I'm going to pass the minus Y because I just want to say yes and let's see what happens. It'll ask me for the password because of sudo. Put in your Ubuntu password and let the installation ride and it says I'm all good to go. I'm ready, it took only a couple of moments and I have netcat and I'm going to verify that with the netcat minus H and see if it's installed. So great, they both look the same and I think we can go ahead and consider this done. Let's do a little housekeeping to know that we have either verified on the Kali Linux or install it on the Ubuntu side. So let's do some housekeeping. Okay, with housekeeping aside, we're back to uh, our companion guide. And we're going to do some banner grabbing, essentially getting some information from a web server or a website. And sometimes that's called OSINT or open source intelligence. We're trying to get some server configuration. So I'm going to come in here and I know our IP for the router is sitting at 176.16.1.1. I'm going to pass my first netcat command. So it's just NC here, 176.16.1.1. And I'm assuming it's HTTPS, so I'm going to go to port 443. And for now, I'm going to not put in the V so you can see what I mean. I'll do it again. I'll hit enter. And now it's in interactive mode. And I can go ahead and put in this command. And I'm going to head and type that in. And I have the command in. I hit enter. And I get some information that HTTP 1. I get a bad request, it's server engine X, and I get a little bit of information about it. So the only reason why I like to do this slightly differently, there's two things I want to call out here when you're exploring with the netcat command. 
we can throw the minus V flag in there, which is minus verbose. If you notice the first time, it just goes into interactive mode and you're not sure if it's doing anything. I'm going to control C to stop that. Do that one more time and this time I'm going to pass the minus V and it tells you that port 443 is open and now I can go ahead and pass my command into it and get some information out of it. So it's netcat or nc, the target IP address. You can go ahead and put in the port minus V for verbose. I'm going to clear the screen and do this a slightly different way so you can see this a variety of ways. And this is kind of like a Linux type of thing, which is I'm going to take this same command and use the pipe symbol and redirect it to this IP address, which is the router again. And this time it's going to be port 80. So I'll go ahead and take this command. I'm going to copy it, come over on the Kali Linux side, drop it into the command line and go ahead and hit enter and it's going to give me that same information. So we're looking at this from two ways. One is you can go into interactive mode and go ahead and type in these commands or you can go ahead and type in these commands and go with the pipe and redirect it to the NC command. Once again and admittedly this is more of a Linux operation and we will discuss this when we do Linux commands. But the main point here is that I'm trying to get information about this website here. And really it's just a web server. And this is where we have PFSense. And we can try this a couple of other ways. For example, I don't have to keep this. I'm gonna clear the screen. I don't have to keep this just to um, the router. I can go ahead and look at other uh, routers and Netcat is considered benign because it's open source. You're not doing anything illegal. This is what web servers do. So I'm going to try and do example.com. And I'm assuming it has port 80 because it has a web server and it's giving me some information. So if you're ever tasked in your new job to do some banner grabbing, one of the options you can do is actually go ahead and use Netcat. That's a tool that is used to do banner grabs and it gives you some information. The way we mitigate of putting out too much information is as we design web servers, we try not to put too much information about the server. So that way, if somebody is doing any of this type of intelligence, they won't get much out of it. Another way we can do some regular OSINT is this is example.com. I can try and view the source. I'm going to right click on that. Actually, just launch the site. It'll go right into the domain. Spawn that. It says it's redirecting us to example.com. And if I wanted to, I can go here and do a view developer and view source. And I can try and get some of the information about the domain here as well, which is maybe there are some Easter eggs or any additional things that may be giving me some information. It tells me that this domain is used for illustrative uh, examples only. That's fine. And this is how you can use Netcat for grabbing a banner or banner grabbing as it's called in the trade. And we can close this out as well. So I'll go ahead and tick some of these off just to say that we've done it. And let's move on to a client server uh, setup. So I'm going to clear the screen. I'm going to bring this up a little bit so we can see our companion guide. I'll clear the screen here as well and it went into screensaver mode, but that's okay because we'll just wake it up and get it out of screensaver mode. And in this case here, we can use the NCAT for a client server or chat server. So I'm going to set the chat server on, <coughs> excuse me, on the um, on the Kali Linux box. So essentially what I'm going to do is put in this command and we're gonna break this command down little by little. So I'm just gonna copy this from here, copy, go ahead and drop it in. And I'm essentially calling the command, it's NC. I say I want to listen I want to put it on this port, so I want to listen on this port. This is an arbitrary number that I picked out of thin air. I made it a high port, which is the low ports are usually from uh, 1 to 1024, about 1 to 1000, roughly speaking. I want it to go well above that. The minus W is the wait time, which is that I want to give it 60 seconds before it times out. In other words, if nothing connects, this connection is going to time out and go back to a prompt after 60 seconds. And the minus V is going to be verbose so I can see that in action. So let's go ahead and hit enter. And it says it is listening on any TCP or UDP on this port. 
and it's waiting for connections. That means the chat server is ready. So on the Ubuntu machine, I'm going to clear this here and I'm going to verify the IP address of this Kali Linux device. And I happen to know what it is already. It's a uh, 172.16.1.103. And we're going to just connect to it just directly from this Ubuntu machine. So I'm going to do 172.16.1.103. Disregard the companion guide for this one. And I'm going to call the port. 12345 minus verbose. And it says I am connected. So I'm connected here. Now let's get some space here so we can actually see this. This is the server, the Kali Linux. The Ubuntu is the client. And I can speak to this server and I can say hello world. And whatever I type here will be shared here. Now normally this is how maybe, maybe a lot of administrators can con communicate. Obviously there's other ways we can communicate, but we can set this up as a client server and I can type hello world again. And you see that whatever I type here is showed up here. In other words, whatever I type in the client will show up in the server. If I want to end these connections, I can just do a control C. So I'll do control C on the server. I do a control C here and the connections are broken on both the client and on the server side. And that's how you set up a chat server and a chat client using Netcat. A couple of quick things before we move on. I'm going to clear. And the verbose command, as I mentioned, if I leave the verbose command off, it doesn't say anything. And if I come down here and I take the verbose command, it doesn't say anything either. But it's ready to go. For example, right now, I know it's listening on port 555, although it's not displaying it on the screen. And this is ready to communicate. I'm going to type hello again, and it works. So remember, the minus V is verbose. And personally, I like to turn it on. You don't always have to turn it on. With that said, let's go ahead and do some housekeeping and tick off the chat server activity and the chat client. And then we're moving on to the dead drop, which is we can set up the servers to do a couple of things. So I'm going to control C here, control C here. So both connections are clear, clear to Ubuntu. And let me briefly explain the, the dead drop. So this could be what we call either compromise or cahoots. In other words, maybe the Kali server or the Kali um, Linux device wants to set up a file that it wants the Ubuntu machine to come and copy. So the way I would do that is first, I need to create a file. So I'm just going to touch a file using um, Linux command, which is touch, and I'm going to call the file netcat. So I just created a file. It's on the desktop. Um, I could leave it there. I'm actually going to just leave it there. That's fine. I'm going to CD, change directory to my home directory. And I have a netcat there. I'm going to remove it So that and do an ls. And it is gone, right? So no netcat file here. So we're going to create it again. So touch netcat.txt. It's just a regular empty file. I'm creating a file. If I do an ls command, it shows up. Then I'm going to use nano. Nano is a regular text editor. And I just want to put some text into the netcat.txt file. And I'm going to say hello world with an exclamation point and save this file. And I realize this is a little bit of Linux, but uh, where we'll get there, we're just trying to show the netcat capability on what that looks like. So I have a file in my home directory. If I do present working directory, I'm in my home. Kali is the user. I'm in the home directory. And I have a file called netcat, which I just saw here. Or I can do an ls minus lah and net. And I see the file here, netcat. Okay, great. I'm going to serve this file up so that way the Ubuntu machine can copy from it. So the way I do that using the net command, netcat command is I'm going to clear and I'm going to netcat. Remember verbose, I like to do verbose. I'm going to say the wait time to connect is going to be 60 seconds to give it some time. I'm a listener. I'm on port. I'm going to say one, two, two, four, one. And this is the file that I'm serving up, netcat. I'm not going to hit it up just yet because I want to set up the client. But this is the server setup. So it's netcat minus v for verbose minus w60 for the wait time, 60 seconds of idle time once I hit enter 
or after the transmission of the file, I'm listening on as a server and I'm listening on this port. Or another way of saying that is this IP address, which is the server, is a 172.16.1.103 that that and this port and I'm serving up this file. On the client side, I'm going to be ready to just pull that information. So just to show you what I mean, this is the IP address of the Ubuntu machine. I'm sitting over here at 176.100. As you guys know, we verified all of this in the beginning. I'm going to ping the Kali Linux box 16.103. And I see that I'm sitting here. I have good connections. I'll control Z out of that. I'm going to clear. And we're going to go ahead and make that netcat client connection to grab that file. Now I'm going to move over to my home directory. So I'm CD tilde. If I do a present working directory, I see I'm at home Ubuntu. I do an LS and I have a netcat. So I'm going to get rid of that one so you can see that better. LS again, clear, no netcat. It's done. Now we're going to make that connection. So it's netcat minus V minus W. I'm going to put in the Kali Linux IP address 172. That's 16. That one. That 103. Call the port 12241. I'm going to pipe it to netcat. That txt. So first, let's set up the server. It says it's listening on port 12241. I'm going to make the client. Got to move down over into the Ubuntu side. And I have an invalid timeout, which is correct. My timeout, I wanted two seconds here. I want it to be real quick. So if there's any problems, I want the client to time out quickly, not the server, so I can get back to trying a different command. And I see that I have succeeded. This is great. Now if I do an LS, I should have a net netcat file. So this is how we can transfer files or sometimes called a dead drop. And what we mean by dead drop is Kali Linux server served up a file, doesn't say a word. I know to come at a specific time. I know the IP address. I'll let you know how I found out about the port when we do the port scanning. I go ahead and run this command. I disconnected and now I have the netcat file. If I want to see what's in it on the Ubuntu side, I can just cat netcat and it shows me it says hello world okay let's just take a quick look at that again so i'm going to go back into the cali linux box so we can really drive this point home so you can see what an append looks like i'll do an ls this is the if you want to call it the origin of the netcat file and if i cat that file i see it says hello world i want to make an addendum to it i'm going to nano and I'm going to say hello world. It's me again. The Kali file. And let's get this right. I get it. I know there may be some misspellings, but let's get this right. And I'm going to save that. And we're going to cat this file again. And you can see it. And this is sitting on the Kali Linux box. If I look at the Ubuntu version, we're going to cat netcat that txt and we get the old file. This is the new one. So if we were to run this process again, so we want to see what this looks like. So I'm going to leave this as is so you can see it. I'm going to clear the screen here and we're going to run this listener again, which is I want to set up the Kali Linux box as a server for the file. So I'm going to, from the history command, I'm just going to type history. Again, I know I realize we're getting into the Linux side of things, but it's important for us to do that. We go to history and I want to run this file, the 44, this command here. So I hit exclamation point 44 and it's going to call that command. And basically it's going to do what we did before, which is netcat minus V for verbose minus W60, a wait time of 60 seconds. I'm in listener mode on port 12241, and this is the file that I'm serving up. I'm going to hit enter, and I'm going to do the same thing on the Ubuntu side, the slight difference. I want to see the history file. 
I'm going to pull this version here, which is 462. So I'm going to do command or exclamation point or bang 462. I'm pulling that file and it went right away, which is fine. And at this point, it overwrote the file, which is okay for our demonstration purposes. And if I cat the netcat text file, you see I have the updated file. So this is important. The, what I wanted to show here is if I wanted to run this again without overwriting the file, I can append to it using the double quotes here or the double or greater than sign, depending on what you'd like to call it. But that's how you can do a transfer file or a dead drop from a one server to a client using Netcat. Okay, let's do some housekeeping and let's do remote code execution. Again, another one of those Kahoot or compromise. And what do we mean? Sometimes this is done deliberately. Sometimes a server or a client is compromised. So we're going to clear our screens. And I just want to do a couple of things here just so you can see this a little bit better. So I'm going to do if config F0 so you can see the IP address, right, of the Kali uh, server. And I'm going to run a couple of commands. One is who am I? Who am I logged in as? I'm logged in as Kali. What's the host name of this computer? It's Kali. And you see that here as Kali at Kali. So I'm logged in as username Kali on a computer named Kali or host name. I want to know where am I in the file structure. I'm in the present working directory. I'm at home, Kali, and I want to know what today's date is. Now why that's important is I want to know what user I am, on what computer, what po position I am in the command line or the folder structure, and what date and time. Reason being is as you continue to work in this field, you may be connecting via remote either through netcat or ssh or some other type of remote protocol and you want to keep track of all the servers many of the servers have a little identifier they put this information here their ip address we're just kind of doing that organically i can also combine all of these into one big command using the ampersand it's all of these and the double ampersand turns this into one command and i can just pull it right into here we want to date and we see all our information here. So we're kind of set up here for the Kali Linux. Then I'm going to set it up as a shell or remote shell. In other words, I'm going to allow the Ubuntu machine to be able to control the shell prompt of this Kali Linux box. So the way I do that is I do a netcat. I do minus L for listening, minus P for the port. And I'm going to do one, two, two, four, one. So one, two, two, four, one minus E to execute a bash shell. And I also want to do it verbose, right? So I like that. And it says it's listening on that port. This is great. I come down here on the Ubuntu side. I'm going to run netcat. I put in the IP address of this Kali Linux box, which is one zero. Oh, Oh, 172 that 16.1 that 1.03 and once again I want to do the verbose and of course I'm missing the port number so we need to put that in here 1 2 2 4 1 minus V and it says connection has succeeded and here I am here on the Ubuntu machine I have a connection here so I can start running commands I can do a present working directory and it says I'm at the home folder of the Kali Linux box. If I want to see what mine looks like, I'm going to do a split terminal here in Ubuntu. Let's get a little bit more real estate to see that. I'm going to open a tab here. This is a different prompt, and I just want to do a present working directory. This is me on my computer here. This is a local connection. This tab is a remote shell into the Kali Linux. I was able to do that because the Kali box basically turned itself into a listener on this port connected to this IP address using netcat and calling out a bash prompt. Sometimes that is a good thing. This is what we mean by Kahoot and I mean by the Kahoot in, comp in um, being a partner or sometimes this can be done by compromise. In other words, 
if we can get a client to run this command here, we would be able to get a remote shell or a backdoor into a device. So that's the reason why we're trying to uh, go over this, not only for the exam, but for real world experiences. You want to prevent running against these type of remote shells or remote code execution. Once again, it could be for Kahoot, where we are partnering with someone, or it could be a compromise. Last but not least, some port scanning. Let's go ahead and take a look at the port scan. So how did I know before what ports were available on the Kali Linux box? Well, right now I know it's listening on port 12241. I'm going to do a port scan. I'm going to control Z on the Ubuntu box. I'm going to go ahead and have the Kali Linux do that again as a listener. And then in here, I'm just going to run a regular port command. I'm going to clear the screen so we can see this a little bit better. NCAT minus V, my favorite. I'm going to go to 172.16.1.103, which is the Kali Linux box. I'm going to do 1 to 1300. I just want to do a port scan of all the ports from 1 to 13,000 to see whatever's open. I'm going to do it in verbose. And it's going to go ahead and run through all of these ports and see if any of them are available. And we're just going to wait and let it run its course until it gets to uh, 13,000. So there we have it. So we have a successful port scan. We ran through 13,000. We found out that port 12241 was open, TCP port. We knew this anyway because we're the ones who actually launched it here, but you can use Netcat as a port scanner. So there you have it in quick review. We used it as a port scanner. We set it up for remote code execution. This could be used in partnership or in Kahoot, or it can be a compromise if we can get an endpoint to actually run this command here. We can do a transfer of files, sometimes called a dead drop, where you put a file, then someone comes in and pick it up later. And we can also use it as a chat server with a chat client. So these are some of the popular things you can do with uh, Netcat. If you want to find out a little bit more in terms of getting help, I can go ahead on the Kali Linux side, either side, it doesn't matter. I'm going to close this connection here. We can do uh, Netcat. I'm just going to do NC minus H. And you get some of the commands that we were looking for here. You see the minus um, W for the wait time in seconds, the minus P for the port. Or if I want full blown help, I can just do man netcat. And there you have the full uh, manual. In terms of port scanning, we're going to go into port scanning using a different tool. It's called Nmap. That'll be the next video in the video series. Looking forward to seeing you on that side. In the meantime, you can learn more and practice using the netcat command using the companion guide and our original setup. I'll see you at the Nmap video.